Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.4.5, Species and Taxonomy from the AQA A-Level Biology Specification. First, we'll have to learn the definition of species, followed by an overview of courtship behaviour and how it is a necessary precursor to successful mating. Next, we'll learn what the phylogenetic classification system is and how it arranges species into groups based on their evolutionary origins and relationships. We will learn what a taxon is and how the phylogenetic classification system is structured. Finally, we'll cover the binomial naming system and how it is used to name each species. So let's start off by defining what a species is. A species is a group of organisms that can interbreed to produce fertile offspring. And this is your standard exam answer. And it's usually just an easy one marker question, define what a species is. Then we need to know about courtship behavior. Courtship behavior is a necessary precursor to successful mating. This is because it allows individuals to recognize and reproduce with individuals of their own species, making reproduction much more successful. This is important as otherwise infertile offspring, if any, would be produced. Courtship behavior often involves some kind of signal. This can be visual, auditory, they may be chemical signals, or the signal may be tactile. Courtship behavior is species specific. Because of this specificity, courtship behavior can be used to classify organisms. The more closely related a species, the more similar their courtship behavior. Next, we need to know about the phylogenetic classification system. This classification system arranges species into groups based on their evolutionary origins and relationships. To construct a phylogenetic tree, scientists use anatomical features, fossils, or the biochemical analysis of base sequences in DNA or the amino acid sequences in proteins. Here we have an example of a phylogenetic tree. Each branch point represents a common ancestor. The more closely related two species, the more recently they had a common ancestor. The first branch point represents the common ancestor of all species, and each following branch point represents another common ancestor from which a new species then evolved. The phylogenetic classification system is hierarchical, meaning that smaller groups are placed within larger groups with no overlap between groups. Note that taxonomy is the study of classification. Today, scientists use phylogeny to classify organisms. Each group is called a taxon, of which the plural is known as taxa. The biggest group is a domain. Within domains, we have kingdoms. Within kingdoms, there exist phyla. Within phyla, there exist classes. Classes are made up of orders, which consist of families, which are made up of genera. This, by the way, is the plural of the word genus and then genera consist of species. So if we look at how this classification system is structured, we need to start at the bottom. Similar species are placed in a genus, similar genera are placed in a family, and so on. As you go down, each taxon contains more groups, but there are fewer organisms within each group. Organisms in each group become more closely related. Note that scientists are constantly updating classification systems due to advances in immunology and genome sequencing, which can help clarify evolutionary origins and relationships between organisms. Note that you do not have to be able to recall examples of different taxonomic systems. You only have to know the names of the different taxa. Finally, we need to know about the binomial naming system. Each species is universally identified by its scientific name. Bi comes from the Latin language and means two, and nomial means name, so basically two names. And that's what it is. It's a way of identifying a particular species and consists of two parts. First, we have the genus, followed by the species. In the case of us humans, we are called Homo sapiens because Homo is our genus and sapiens is our species. There are a few rules which you need to know. The genus always has to start off with a capital letter and the species is written entirely in lowercase. Everything is in italics if typed or underlined if written. Great, so we've defined what a species is. We've covered courtship behavior as well as the phylogenetic classification system and how it is hierarchical. 
We've covered taxonomy and what the different taxa are, as well as how to identify each species using the binomial naming system. That would be it for now guys, thanks for watching, if you have any ideas or suggestions just post them down below, subscribe, comment, next time we'll be looking at biodiversity within a community.